Welcome back to Motion Pick Recap. Today we're going to recap the adventure, comedy and romance movie titled, The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. A man called Walter Mitty is sitting at home, having a hard time managing to gather courage to send a wink to a woman he finds attractive on an online dating site. Eventually he gathers enough courage to do it however, but then instead gets an error message saying he can't send it, getting irritated. He prepares to go to work, and calls the online dating site called eHarmony on his way to work about the error, and a guy called Todd answers. Walter explains he's trying to leave a wink for a woman called Cheryl who started at his division a month ago, and who he overheard near the bagels was on their site, and Todd comments that sounds quite unique. Todd sees on his profile he left the bin there, done that section blank, which Walter said he skipped because he hasn't been anywhere. Todd asks if he's done anything mentionable, and suddenly, Walter hears a dog barking and begins running jumping to a building. He comes out with a dog yelling it's gonna blow. Cheryl appears asking how he knew it was gonna blow, and Walter says he thought he smelled gas, adding he engineered a prosthesis for her dog chips while sprinting down the stairwell. Suddenly, Todd asks if he's still there, and Walter says he zoned out for a second. Todd asks if he does that a lot, and Walter answers he guesses he does it a normal amount, but ends the call to run to his job. As he arrives at his job at the Life magazine, he's met by his sister Odessa, saying she needs him to go and help their mother move in her piano because she has an audition. Walter says he's late for work and can't. Meeting a colleague, he hears about bad news, that Life magazine was acquired over the weekend, and that they're going to downsize them to some kind of dot-com thing. Suddenly, the managing director of the company Transition appears, called Ted. Ted asks what they do, and when Walter starts explaining he works with Life's photo units, Ted interrupts saying he was really getting into the song in the elevator and stopped listening. They arrive at their floor, and Walter sees Cheryl asking about his weekend, but she's actually asking another colleague. Suddenly he begins dreaming about himself being adventurous, and Cheryl being interested in him, saying he can contact her with his falcon. Meanwhile, Ted asks his colleagues if Walter would move if they threw a paperclip on him. Ted says ground control to Major Tom and throws it, and Walter reacts, and the others laugh and walk away. Walter goes to his station and meets his friend Hernando. Walter sees a negative roll, sent from Sean O'Connell containing a letter and a present to him. Hernando says he got a man crush in Sean O'Connell. In the letter, Sean says he's sorry Life magazine got acquired, and wants to give a gift for all the years of hard work, explaining photo number 25 is the best photo he's probably ever taken, calling it the quintessence of life, and hopes Walter will make sure it's published. He sees the gift is a nice leather wallet with Life's motto on it. Looking at the photos, they see photo number 25 is missing. A guy appears saying Sean sent a telegram that an old dude delivered, and that they want to see photo 25 in their meeting in 5 minutes. Next, the staff is informed that this month's issue of the Life magazine will be the last, and that many of them will be fired. Ted says they just received a telegram from an old man from Sean O'Connell, saying he expects photo number 25 he sent to be the cover, the quintessence of life. Ted points at Walter, calling him Major Tom, asking to see the photo, but Walter replies it's being processed. The meeting ends, and Walter walks up to Cheryl, introducing himself. Because she works with photo accounts, Walter asks if she's got an address for Sean O'Connell, but she says it's hard since he's always moving around and has no phone number, but says she'll go and try to investigate. Next, he and Hernando are trying to figure out where Sean is based on the photos he's taken. Cheryl appears, saying she's contacted some people trying to find Sean. She asks if he's working on 25 and asks to see. Walter reveals he can't find 25, and is trying to figure out where Sean is based on the other photos he sent. When she leaves, Walter stands up, remarking he's worked on a side project, which Cheryl finds amazing, but he's just zoned out and is daydreaming again. Next, Walter is at their mom's new apartment, trying to get the piano into it. It's Walter's birthday, and Odessa gives him a toy called Stretch Armstrong, which he loved as a kid. In the apartment, Odessa finds some old stuff from their father, and Walter sees a travel journal his father gave to him once. His mother remarks she thought it was sad for him when he went to work at that pizza place named after a father, Papa John's, after his own father had just died. Suddenly Walter gets a message from Hernando, who has found a word in the water, of a ship's name. As Hernando leaves the elevator, Ted walks in, asking if he's working or playing with toys. Walter explains it's a gift, and Ted tells him to give it to him, since this is a place of business, which Walter refuses. The two start a real serious fight, and suddenly, Walter jumps at him and the two go right through the wall, and fall down into a truck. The fight continues, and Walter starts following Ted who's trying to get away. The two grab one arm each of Stretch Armstrong, 
and are both determined to be the one taking it. Suddenly, Stretch Armstrong has had enough of their quarrel, dragging them towards each other, and the two prepare to destroy each other, but then suddenly they're back in the elevator, and Walter was just daydreaming. As they get off, suddenly Todd from the eHarmony online dating site calls, asking him if he's traveled somewhere he can put on his profile. Walter says he went to Phoenix once, but never left the airport. Suddenly he sees Cheryl and hangs up on Todd. He shows her that they've found a name of a ship in the water, and she asks if he wants to walk with her to go get her son while she googles the ship's name for him, which he'd like to do. She asks how long he's been working there, and Walter explains he's been Sean O'Connell's point guy at Life magazine since he started 16 years ago. A colleague calls Cheryl, talking about Sean, and meanwhile, Walter shows Cheryl's son some techniques for skateboarding tricks, something he was quite good at as a kid. Cheryl tells Walter her colleague had sent a letter to Greenland a week ago, where Sean O'Connell was at the time, and when googling the ship's name, it says the ship is in Greenland. Cheryl remarks it's a good lead and that he should follow it up. Before she goes, she remarks the song about Major Tom is about courage and going into the unknown, that the bearded guy Ted doesn't know what he's talking about. Next up, Ted sees Walter, saying he wants that photo, that next time they meet, he wants it. Hernando says he can't find 25 anywhere, that maybe Sean forgot to send it. Suddenly, Walter sees Sean O'Connell in a photo calling for him, and he starts running out. Hernando calls on him, but gets no answer. Next, Walter is leaving the country, going to Greenland. A day later, he arrives to Nuke in Greenland, with an almost empty airplane. When he goes to rent a car, he chooses the red one. Walter then drives to the coast and walks into a local bar, where he asks if they receive mail here, and the bar owner explains they helicopter mail to the ships when they pass by. Suddenly, a drunk man comes up to Walter and asks him to sing a song, but since Walter doesn't want to sing, they begin an intensive fight. Suddenly Walter yells at him to stop, saying he recognizes his thumb. Next, the man says he flew Sean O'Connell out to a ship last Tuesday, and Walter is blown away he located his thumb. The man remarks there are like eight people in Greenland, and is a good place to locate a thumb. Suddenly, he says he's flying radio parts out to the ship, and that Sean may still be on board. Walter remarks there's a storm moving in, and the drunk man says it is, that he's nervous about that storm, which is why he wanted to get a couple of beers down. Walter says he won't go with him, and the drunk pilot walks out to start the helicopter. Suddenly Cheryl comes out with a guitar, saying this one is for Walter Mitty, and starts singing the song Space Oddity by David Bowie. Walter walks out, getting motivated to find adventure, and then suddenly starts running to the helicopter, and jumps in. Next, they're taking off, leaving the small town to go and find the ship. The pilot says he's glad he came. Some time later, they reach the ship. Walter asks where they'll land, and the man says they won't, making him confused. The pilot says he was going to drop the radio parts into the boat, but asks him to take them and then jump into the boat. Walter asks what he means by jumping into the boat, and gets the reply he's got to go now, and the pilot says go go go. As Walter jumps, the pilot yells no, that he meant to jump into the little boat, not the big one. A man yells to him to keep calm, that he's got at least a minute before he freezes. Suddenly a fin appears, and the people on the boat say it's a porpoise, which will protect him from the sharks. Walter says okay, but then suddenly they see it's not a porpoise, and Walter has to fight the shark. Eventually he's rescued. On the ship, Walter is told a pilot boat came and took Sean four hours ago to go to Iceland. A crew member helps him get dry clothes, and then shares a kick-ass cake. Walter suddenly remarks it's clementine cake, which her mother makes, and which he loves, and the crew member says Sean brought it with him. On the paper wrapper, Walter sees notes for a field itinerary for photography, and the crew member explains Sean said he was going to a volcano in Iceland tomorrow. Walter asks if there's any possibility they could land in Iceland, and is told they have too, because he lost their new radio in the ocean, and Walter says he's sorry. Next, they're arriving at Iceland, but are told he's got to hurry and take the only bike left, because there are some horny Chileans that want to go to the strip club, and Walter begins running. He takes the bike, and next, He's biking across Iceland to get to the volcano. Suddenly he gets a call from Todd from eHarmony, who says he just got up in Los Angeles and thought of him, saying he added he went to Phoenix once to his profile. Walter then explains he just went to Greenland, where he jumped out of a helicopter into the ocean, and had a shark fight. Todd gets excited and asks questions, but Walter says he doesn't have time to talk since he's on his way to a volcano, and Todd replies. What the? He then sees birds, forming Cheryl's face, and drives into a pole, totally wrecking the bike. He starts running, and eventually reaches some settlements. Walter asks some kids how to find the volcano he's looking for, but they don't understand English. 
he however manages to trade their longboard with Stretch Armstrong, after which their parents yell at them they need to go. Walter enters the building, and finds a stressed man saying the hotel is closed. Walter asks about Sean, and the man says he got a plane for him, which takes off in 15 minutes down in the village. Walter gets excited and starts running. He sees the village, and picks some stones he finds that he attached to his hands, after which he takes his longboard and starts going down the hillside to reach the airfield. Reaching the city, he finds it totally empty, and suddenly an alarm goes off. The man appears with the car, and the man tries to explain the volcano has an eruption, and suddenly they see Sean on an airplane taking photos. They start driving as fast as the car can go, and the man is yelling all kinds of things in Icelandic. Some time later, they arrive at Papa John's, and Walter thanks him for coming back for him. Walter continues investigating the photos, and later that evening, he calls Cheryl. She says she didn't see him in his office when she went by, and Walter explains he's actually in Iceland, having taken her advice to follow up on that lead. He asks her to Google some words for him from the paper wrapper, but they don't seem to have anything in common. She explains they've started to fire people at the company, and that it'll be different when he gets back. As they end the call, Walter gets a message from Hernando saying they both will get fired if he's not back at work tomorrow. As he gets back to the United States and to the Life Building, Ted sees him, saying he wants that photo now. Walter explains they think Sean still has it on him, and Ted replies he doesn't care and fires him, saying they'll make another cover. Walter leaves the building, and goes home to Cheryl. But then a man opens her door, and as Walter asks to talk to Cheryl, the man calls on her, calling her honey. Walter leaves the longboard for her son, and runs away. In a taxi, he daydreams again, imagining he's on Conan, where they think he's awesome. Later, he gets home to his mother, where they've just installed the piano in the living room. Disappointed, he picks out the cards in his wallet, and throws the wallet from Sean away. He sits down in the living room, looking at one of the images. Suddenly he sees what it is, it's a part of his mother's piano. Excited, he asks his mother if someone took a picture of her piano about a week ago, and she answers she did with Sean's camera, who came to visit. He gets surprised, and his mother explains he wanted to know about his work schedule and stuff. He asks why she didn't tell him, and she says she did, that he must have zoned out again. Walter asks if Sean said if he was going somewhere, and she replies Sean said he liked her clementine cake and wanted some to get permission by warlords to trek through the wilds and places in Afghanistan to photograph snow leopards in the Himalayas. Walter starts preparing stuff, and next up, he's going to the ungoverned Afghanistan, where he's guided by local men to the Himalayas, giving cake to the warlords, who enjoy his mother's cake. After several days, they start reaching higher altitudes, and at some point, the local men won't follow with him any longer and he gets a flute as a gift, and then continues on his own. Suddenly, his phone rings, and it's Todd, asking what's up. Todd says he's got a lot of winks after his updated profile, but that Cheryl has left the site. Walter remarks he's in the Himalayas and needs to do oxygen choices, saying he'd like him to take down his account too. Suddenly a man tells him to be quiet. Walter hangs up, seeing it's Sean. Sean too gets surprised to see him, asking how the hell he got up there. Sean asks him to be very still, saying there's a snow leopard over there. They sit quietly for a long time, and then Walter says he couldn't find photo number 25. Sean says he's sitting on it, and Walter doesn't understand. Sean says it's in his wallet, the gift. Walter remarks he's not got the wallet anymore, telling Sean it was a stupid move. Sean says it perhaps was a bad idea, but asks what he did with the wallet. Walter says he threw it away, which hurts Sean's feelings. Sean however says it was a shame, that the photo truly was a beauty. Suddenly they see the snow leopard, and the two enjoy the moment. Walter asks why he's not taking any photo, and Sean replies that if he really likes a moment, he doesn't want the distraction of the camera. The snow leopard disappears, and the two see some men playing soccer. Walter asks what the picture in the wallet was, and Sean just replies they'll be outnumbered if he doesn't join, and next up, they're playing soccer with the local people. Next, Walter gets back to the United States, but is apprehended, and asked how he got to Afghanistan's, where there's a travel ban, and Walter explains he went through Yemen. Guards remark that's a violent place, and Walter tells them he's got his methods. They ask if there's anyone that can verify that he is Walter Mitty here in Los Angeles, and suddenly Walter remembers one he knows. Next, he meets Todd from eHarmony, and the two sit down and talk about his recent adventures. Todd remarks he's not how he pictured him, saying now when he sees him, it's like he's met Indiana Jones. Next, Walter says he's sorry, that it was his responsibility they would keep the piano, which their father gave to her on their wedding, but his mother says it's not his fault, that they're all grown-ups here. 
she remarks he should put the check in his wallet, taking it out, saying she found it in the trash. Walter gets surprised and happy. Outside, he picks out photo number 25. He goes back to the life building, which is pretty much empty, and walks into a meeting room. Ted says he's not welcome, and Walter tells them this is the picture Sean wanted on the last cover of Life magazine, the quintessence of life, that they have two days to cover. Before leaving, Walter tells Ted he understands that he's got to do what he needs to do, but that he doesn't have to be a prick. Hernando asks what photo 25 was, and Walter replies he didn't look, so he doesn't know. Trying to get a new job, Walter now has some more stuff he can out on his resume. Suddenly, he gets an email from Richard, Cheryl's son, thanking him for the longboard he gave him, and a video of the trick he learned. Getting his last salary, he sees Cheryl leaving the building. He runs up to him, and he was glad for the mail yesterday, and Cheryl thanks him back. Walter reveals she was his motivation for making the whole trip that eventually led him to Sean in the photo. She's glad for him, but then asks why he ran away the day he came by her house and left the longboard, and he explains he saw her husband and figured he would go. She says the man was fixing her refrigerator, and that he's not her husband. Cheryl suddenly remarks the last issue came out this morning, and they stop to look. The cover is dedicated to the people who made it, with Walter on the cover. The two leave, and Cheryl asks if they shouldn't buy one of those, and Walter remarks he wanted to be cool and not buy one right away. The end. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this, and hit the like button to help us out. Until next time, take care.